What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Captain Trucker. And I'm here south of Bacalode at one of my friend's house. He's an Englishman. He built this place years ago. It's pretty nice. Decent place. Anyway, I want to talk in this video about, like, <clears throat> the ongoing kind of stereotypes that, like, yeah, I don't know, maybe some American women still have towards not just towards Filipino women, but also men who go to the Philippines and, you know, look for a wife or something. Uh, you know, so we got to, like, remind people that there's whole, like, populations, like, populations of expats, right? Many different categories. I mean, there's, like, probably hundreds of thousands, I would imagine. I got to... And it's hard to, like gauge it's the exact number because you have like some transient travelers or whatever but yeah so like in populations there's always like categories of people right i mean you're gonna have like working expats you're gonna have retirees you're going to have uh some expats that have a, a good amount of money and some expats that don't and they come here sometimes just to save money or whatever and then you have expats that are like, maybe they're like humanitarians or they're on some sort of like, that's a nice sunset. You know, like humanitarian causes or something. So the point is, is like in populations, you have like all sorts of people and they're not all necessarily like criminal, pervert, degenerates that like, <laughs> or maybe they are, who knows. Uh, but no, no, they're not. They're not all like that. So, like, I, I go to a bar with my friend, a good friend of mine. I've known him for, like, a long time. Really long time. Maybe almost 20 years. So, we go to this bar in Houston, Texas, and it was part of, like, some group, like, one of those Facebook groups or something. Anyway, I wasn't, I wasn't part of that group. Uh, and so, you know, people are automatically, of course, standoffish. I wasn't really in, like, much of a social mood at the time. I actually drank a little bit more than I should have before so I was actually kind of subdued I wasn't even feeling it but I guess like the leader of the group was this like how can I describe these people like I, I don't know maybe 30 40 something year old like Houstonian yuppie white collar type I guess people probably spend a lot of money for a lifestyle <laughs> you know that sort of thing the Joneses uh, well anyway I don't know, I guess I didn't have the most positive attitude. But once I told her, I think she came up to me and I, I told her that I was in, living in the Philippines. And then it was almost like her jaw dropped and she was just like shocked. And then she starts making jokes, you know, passive aggressive insults that I'm a criminal. And, uh, and it's just like, you know, she, she's one of these women. And like, I don't mean to be like nasty or rude or anything, but she has like this negative impression of... Filipinas as well, I guess. And I guess we live in a very carnal world, indeed. And I know that, like, weight and looks and stuff can be more sensitive for women, especially, like, you know, it's hard. Like, if you're a woman and you're grotesquely overweight, I mean, I'm not trying to sound like a jerk, but it, it is, um, men are very visual carnal creatures at first attraction usually right the first thing men usually notice is like visual so they're they're captivated by beauty oh, so yeah cleopatra used that to her advantage anyway she was a great seductress in history i'm getting off topic here sort of but yeah i just wasn't digging it and you can just tell like even today like even in modern urban cities in America, and I would imagine England's the same too. It's like there's still just a negative perception of anybody almost that comes to these countries, right? Or it's automatically like that you're an older man chasing a 30 years younger woman or something like that, which that does happen. And I've said this before, that happens in, uh, you know, these kind of case by case and they, they sort of congregate in some of the same areas if you will of like Manila and some other cities um, and 
I think maybe Dumagati and other places. And they're creating a perception among other foreigners and other expats. This impression that it's normal, again, um, you know, for a 65-year-old to be running around with a 20-year-old. And, like, I've spoken about this before. I mean, the whole, like, age is just a number thing. Yes, of course it is when it comes to love and all that good stuff, right? But it's still, like, even in this country with a population of, like, 100 million-plus people, I think it's an exaggeration. I think it's a grotesque exaggeration to say that it's normal for every other neighbor in the province, and even in the cities, to be like some young girl almost with an older uh, foreigner. It happens. That doesn't mean it's normal. But anyway, that's the kind of stuff that I guess it still sticks, you know? It sticks in a lot of people's minds. Uh, and it's, it's interesting. So, but obviously, I mean, it's pretty obvious, like, especially with some American women and European women. I mean, it's, Filipinas are beautiful. Uh, and I'm not saying, and, and uh, you know, white women are too, black women are too, Latino women, of course. Um, but maybe it's just my own personal bias or opinion, but there seems to be like, to me, like a lot of beautiful women here, even like in the provinces, uh, even in the, in the cities, of course. Um, and, you know, we live in a very superficial world, so people hate on that, right? They probably hate on the fact that some, you know, somebody from a province in a third world country can be pulling, um, you know, successful middle-aged American men because they do and like the thing is is like there's a lot of successful expats out here so I'm not sure this this whole thing of like oh these countries only attract you know degenerate criminals or people just barely making it off their social security or people with uh, disabilities that get roped into something I mean these all happen right but these aren't the majority of like the population of expats so i mean you know i guess it just comes down to ignorance and <laughs> something like that but yeah i just like I, I lose patience for things as i age and it's just like you know you sort of know what you like at points in life you know what you're into you know what you're interested in and i know like for me like i I've, I'm a fairly maybe complex person in some ways. Oh, look at that sunset. Isn't that beautiful? So I can say for me, like, the appeal of, like, a more simple life and a more simple relationship, even a more less complex person would be, like, appealing. And... I guess this would be like a stereotype too, but I, I do feel like, broadly speaking, like Westerners, mentally, psychologically, I really believe in general they carry significantly more baggage than like your average Filipino or like your average Southeast Asian person or whatever. And I think that's more like, that's because of like culture, you know? Uh, the West is very competitive, right? Very competitive, lots of demands, very high expectations of lifestyle and work and all that good stuff. And that causes a lot of stress, man. It causes a lot of stress when you're indoctrinated in those cultures, man. Like when you, especially like I know for Americans, like you know, when you live in America like your whole life, it's like all you know, okay? And you talk about like indoctrination and I don't want to say brainwashing, but you really do believe that you, you live, like, in the best place on earth, so to speak, right? A lot of pride, you know? I mean, every every culture, every country has their own pride. And that's all good, right? I guess. Although I guess they say pride's the number one sin, too, right? So, I forgot I was going somewhere with that point. Where was I going with that? Oh, my goodness. Uh... 
Oh my God, I was going somewhere with that. Oh, my point is, is like, <laughs> they live more complicated lifestyles and there's a lot more responsibilities and just in industrial advanced societies, man, they're complex, I think. Yeah, I like the idea of simplification. I think there's nothing wrong with it. I think people that hate on it, they're just hating. I mean, that crowd I told you about at the beginning of this video, it's like, most of those people in that group are probably spending most of their money, or a big majority of the money, and their earnings and their time paying for a certain lifestyle that they're bought into, okay? And that's fine. It is what it is. But don't go around calling all Axpats criminals and don't go around calling all Filipinos, you know, just a bunch of gold diggers or something like this or call them all demean them and stuff because these are nasty stereotypes man so it is what it is um, you gotta remember perspective and it's good that there's a lot of good PR going on these days about these countries and stuff like this and don't get me wrong there's plenty of bad people here <laughs> I'm just kidding oh that's terrible anyway I'm at my friend's house I will talk to you all later guys it's Captain Trucker and um I didn't have much to say tonight. I just wanted to kind of like reach out, make this video, just chat with you. Oh, there's a dog. It's a little dog. Anyway, more to come. I'll talk to you all later. Look forward to your comments as always. Appreciate them. And uh, we just got 3,000 subscribers. Oh, and I meant to say, uh, I want to give a shout out to a vlogger, uh, the black man in the village. He's in Tacloban, Philippines. I think it's called Lete, the island. Lete? Sort of east of here, I think. Anyway, a uh, good channel. Check his out. Uh, good guy. He's an older black gentleman. Um, it's kind of like a family man vibe I get on his channel. I haven't seen all this stuff. I've seen some of it, but it's good. It's like he does a lot of stuff for the community. He's always, you know, hanging out with his wife and the kids and the community and getting people rice and stuff like that. So, you know, real cool, real chill, like easy going channel. And I, he speaks on heavy stuff too occasionally, but it's not his whole thing just to be like controversial or just to be flashy. He's not trying to like, you know, he's not one of these clickbait type of dudes. Uh, he's just real uh, honest, seems like a decent guy. So check out his channel. And he, uh, he also gave me a shout out, which was really kind. So yeah, thank you for that. And by the way, he's called the black man in the village because he's black. <laughs> Sorry, it's stupid. Well, that's what it's called. Anyway, by the way, he lived in South Central for a long time, South Central Los Angeles. Uh, and I used to, I stayed in like Crenshaw for like five or six months. So if you can hang out and live in those areas, man, you can pretty much go anywhere in the world as far as I'm concerned. All right, well, it's Captain Trucker. Thank you for watching. And let's stop hating on the Axe Bats and the Filipino women for all of us Westerners out there. Okay, bye-bye.